United States government promised those interpreters safety in this country in exchange for their help, and many of them got left behind as the last C-130 left the frickin' country. So I say, if we're gonna be breaking our promises to our allies, we're a terrible ally. And that's probably why the war on terrorism isn't going so good. Why it's been going on for nearly 20 something years and we haven't gotten rid of terrorism. Because you can't get rid of an ideology with wars and bombing innocent people. It's like Ron Paul said, peace and freedom can't be achieved through bombs and intimidation. Yep. I say it's time we embrace peace and I say it's time we start spreading it the right way. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. service man. Eric Mulder everybody. Woo! Did you find him on Discord? He is Agent Mulder so you know he might know something about those aliens. I don't know. Truth is out there. I want to believe. <laughs> uh, next we have Kyle. He is here from antiwar.com which is Scott Horton's group. So he's got some uh, information to share with everybody. All right, thanks everybody for coming out today. Um, these wars have been going on for a really, really long time. Like Eric, I was 10 years old when 9-11 happened. I gotta say, I, you know, I was just a kid from St. Louis. I really didn't know what New York was or where it was or anything like that. I didn't have a big emotional reaction to that day. But for the next like five or six years, I experienced the constant barrage of propaganda telling me that we were in a clash of civilizations against the Muslim world and that it wouldn't end until we subdued them or they would continue to kill us. They did this through saying that there was anthrax, constantly yellow, orange, red warnings. Every single week it was warnings that the football game was gonna be the site of a terrorist attack, a local mall, uh, the water supply places so that your uh, water wouldn't be safe. And then they started tying it into the war in Iraq, uh, saying that Saddam Hussein was going to give terrorists WMDs and uh, set off nuclear weapons all over the United States. And with all that happening, I was terrified. I was terrified for myself, for my friends, for my family, thinking that, you know, any day I would go to school and not come home to see, you know, my family uh, because of the war on terror. And because of that, I definitely support the troops. I remember when we were in uh, class in school, we would write letters to the troops and care packages. And we were told every day that those were the people that were making us safe, that were making sure that my parents came home from work at the end of the day, that my school was safe, that we had to support those troops or else we were, you know, a, you know, for the terrorists, right? If you're not with us, you're, or if you're not for the war, you're with them. And uh, I, I really believe that. And in fact, when uh, Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning bravely leaked all those uh, documents when I was about 17 years old, I wouldn't pay attention to it because I thought that was classified information only meant for the elites, that they were going to know how to discern everything and keep us safe. And uh, then I was exposed to Ron Paul and started to wake up and see the truth. I watched Ron Paul explain to Rudy Giuliani on the dis, uh, debate stage how the reason that 9-11 happened wasn't because Muslims hate us, but rather because we have been at war in Iraq uh, for years and years. And then I looked and realized that, oh my God, our uh, Secretary of State has said that killing 500,000 Iraqi children was worth it. Of course there's people that hate the United States because of that. And then I listened to a speech where he described what it would be like if China was occupying the United States. And I start to feel empathy for the people of Iraq and Afghanistan and start to realize that those were real people, that they weren't just harboring terrorists because they hate America, that most of them were peaceful and just wanted to go about our lives. And we were depriving that to millions and millions of people across the Middle East. Uh, there's been well over a million people killed by our wars, uh, 38 plus million displaced and left homeless. And this is from places all the way on the map from Mali to the Philippines. This is a serious issue and we have to end these damn wars. Um, I'm so happy that so many people came out today to check out what we're doing. We have to break down the propaganda narratives. We have to break ourselves out of the fear that terrorists are going to kill us and that we have to be constantly waging these aggressive wars to bring ourselves peace. Uh, it's these wars that have actually created the chaos. It's the wars that have made us unsafe. And if we're able to break free of this fear and to bring our troops home and uh, to end these wars, to stop 
giving so much money to the military industrial complex. You know, these people, they've uh, given a billion dollars to Congress in lobbying over the past 20 years and have made $2 trillion in profit in return. That's why these wars are happening, because it's enriching the few at the cost of all of us. Uh, of course, those who have, you know, gone to the Middle East to serve have borne the brunt of the cost as far as Americans, but most of the cost has been in the lives of all the people across the Middle East. Uh, they've been displaced and killed and, and just have their lives absolutely ruined by our wars. I often think of what it would be like if I were born in Iraq or Afghanistan in 1990. Uh, rather than the United States of America and how unlikely it would be that I would be alive today. Uh, I would certainly have some serious PTSD, trauma issues, uh, potentially loss of limb, and it wouldn't even necessarily be maybe from a U.S. bomb, but rather a militia group that the U.S. supported or just arms that we poured into a conflict because we thought it would help our geostrategic positions. This must end. That way the rest of the world can figure out what they want to do there and we can start to fix our country here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Jacob, for putting this together today. Yeah, I know it was a lot of work in a short period of time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Kyle, thanks for speaking. Give Kyle a big hand. Uh, we do have another impromptu speaker, this man, Rashan. So he is the Democracy for Iran man. He has been on the sidewalk, I think, here for like going on seven or eight weekends now. Um, so he just has a few words to share. So if you could just give him your respect and attention, we appreciate it. My name is the Roshan. I came to the United States 1978 to finish my education and go back home to help the people. Year after that, 1979, the Ayatollah Khomeini came to power with the hand of the international or corporate because of the interests of, of the resources in Iran. I'm standing here possibly for the first time to say who is the enemy of the democracy? Who is the enemy of the democracy? The 1400 years ago, the Muhammad wrote the book and they call it Quran. This textbook is the enemy of the democracy. The woman's right doesn't have no right in this book. A slavery is protected with this book. Tell corporate America, tell Pentagon to release the document about this book to educate the American people. Right now, the Taliban in Afghanistan came because of this task book. Ayatollah Khomeini or Ali Khomeini in Iran or Erdogan in Turkish and Pakistani, they follow this book. 8,000 schools in the Pakistan teaching this book. And